You are now listening to Carly's Couch. I'm Carly. And I'm Lex. In this podcast, we discuss a wide array of topics about life and how to live your best life. Whatever that looks like for you. (laughs) Hope y'all enjoy. This week on Carly's Couch, we talk about comparison. Sure, it can rob you of your joy, but how can you use it to grow and be constructive? Did that make sense? It did. Yes. To be constructive? Absolutely. Look, because hold on, that's... Look, I had... (laughs) Yes. We're on the same wave. Constructive. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're going to leave that. Doom, 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 doom. Okay. Happy Monday or whatever day it is. Hey, y'all. Um, CC Fierce here. Oh, this is Lextopia. I'm drinking out of my CC Fierce mug that you can get at bigcartel.carliscouch.com. And shout out to everybody who has bought mugs. Thank you. Now I would like to see them. I would like to see these images mm-hmm. of the mugs you got. Some people, like, texted me their pictures, and then I had to, like, go post it up to show other people that people are buying them. Um, but they're still up. You can still catch your Lex mug or your Carly mug or your Both of Us mug on the website. So check that out, and thanks for listening, as always. Yeah, we appreciate y'all. Um, we're going to start with our question from the couch this week. What is your best first date story? Mm. Some of y'all had some funny ones. Some of y'all had some cute ones. Um, one of them, my friend said, he said this shit was a pyramid scheme ambush. Um, been there, seen that. I feel like there was a time in the thousands where you should be here. Anytime somebody was like, yo, come to this with me, it was going to be some bullshit. Um, right. So sorry about that. You thought she wanted you. She just wanted your, your people. Crazy. Um, bar, bar crawl through Baltimore's Federal Hill. My first time seeing the city, bars, drinks, food, Aww. whole full evening. Another one met her in New Orleans, had fun all day, great food, don't remember her name, left broke. That's funny because a a lot of people, interesting first dates were like exploring a new place. Mm -hmm. So noticing that vibe. What is a first date? Sad. Another one said, we vibed and I sucked toes at the end of the night and a three-year relationship followed. I know that's right (laughs) because a lot of times when you just be like, you know, F it and do the most on a first date, like... You'd be like, dang, these are vibes. Like, we vibing, and it, it turns into something. So don't hold yourself back. Yeah, be authentic. Mm-hmm. Um, her ex mysteriously showed up with some other girl and sat at the table <laughs> near us. That's wild. Yeah, trash. That's Toxic. wild. Um, another one said, um, we met for dinner and drinks and ended up talking in the car till the sun came up. That's sweet. That's, That's actually kind of sweet. Took her to Mexico City on a whim. We met the day before. He think he me. <laughs> Met downtown and just walked and talked. Oh, so then there's the ones too that's like the fact that you can actually vibe with somebody and talk to them for hours. That's really actually a big deal. And I think a lot of times social media or conversations we see make it seem like it's all about like how much money you spend and all of that. But it really is like connecting with people that, you know, that's what we want to do at a, at a first date mm-hmm. um, for a lot of people. That's what makes it memorable, right? Do you have any cool first date stories? Yeah. Um, like meeting at a beach, mine are real cute. So like meeting at a beach um, and just like walking and talking Aww. and then like extend it into like Broke us going boy. to see the full moon, <laughs> um, us going to see the full moon on the beach and having tacos in the car and like mm-hmm. talking. Yeah, and listen up, broke boys, because like all of these things work. Like you don't have to do the most. That's also what I say. Yeah, we always we be talking about broke boys, but too. just do stuff that mat. Like that's important. Yeah. That matters. That's fun. That's engaging. That's cute. Intentional. And and you got to know that the person likes cute stuff like that, right? Like Carly, like you could just pop up and be like, pick me a flower. And yeah, I'm excited. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, one of I have a couple random ones, but they were. Um, one was in New York and I was actually going to New York to hang out with this other guy. And then I met up with this other guy (laughs) and then we ended up going out, um, and went to like the, out to eat, went to a hookah lounge, went to end up at a strip club. And he told one of the strippers it was my birthday. And he was like, just watching me get a lap dance. It was really fun. And it was like all night escapades. Um, and then another one with, was a couple of relationships ago, our first date, we went to this Italian restaurant, in Beverly Hills. Um, and then we ended up doing shrooms at the table. Uh, we went on like a walk around to another place, then came back to the first place and got an espresso. So it was like literally like a six hour date of just <laughs> being out there and wilding out. And then I remember it wasn't until I got in the car to drive home and I was driving. I was like, whoa, like all the lights look real stigmatism. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? And I forgot, like we had took the shrooms. Like they were just hitting as I left. So I was like... Yeah, that was terrible because we were driving through the canyons. Well, I was driving through the canyons and everything. So don't necessarily recommend that. Um, but, yeah, sometimes it's interesting when you can just do wild out things with certain people. Sometimes you you don't get the vibe you can 
just wild out with everybody, right? Like you're a little bit more, you know, let me see what, what kind of person you are, whatever. And sometimes you just be, like I said, F it and just let loose. So Yeah, and if the if it feels good, then do it. Because, mm-hmm. like, the person going to Mexico City, it depends. I'm not doing that with everybody. Nah, but if we vibing, nah. then maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like, de- depends. Yeah, nah. I had one time I remember a guy, and he was a friend of my friend. So, like, she had kind of vetted him. But his first thing was like, you want to come to Thailand? And I was like, nigga, no. Like, I don't even know you. And I could tell you're going to be annoying by, like, uh. the fact that the first thing you said was come to Thailand. Like, I don't know you. I think sometimes guys don't realize how, how we have to perceive things and like <laughs> yes. she's not safe um but yeah i was like no but now i think he's married with kids so congrats um today we're gonna talk about comparison so we all know you know the the usual things we hear about comparison being bad and blah 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 and we know why but we'll talk about that but i was in the bahamas for a few weeks over the holidays and while i was there my cousin who she's like six months older than me um but she has her, you know, kids and she has her house um, that she built and they had just renovated. It looked really nice. Right. And so it's been a while since I'd visited her and talking to her. She was talking about property and things she's going to build up and just all these big things. Right. Things that seemed really big to me. And in my mind, I'm like, dang, like I feel like I'll say like a loser for right now. That Maybe that's not exactly how I felt, but I was kind of like at first, like, dang, I need to get my stuff together. Like she talking about, you know, building properties and investing and, you know, how it's not that hard. And, you know, what we did was this and this and that. And I'm just like, gosh, I'm struggling just with like regular stuff right now. And so at first I I recognized that I was comparing and I felt kind of bad, but then I was like, actually, let me get out of this that actually you can, this is something you can do. And then I, I remember I started asking her questions about like how she did it. What was the, um, process she went through and all of that. And then I, I kind of, for the next couple of days was starting to think about like what my goals were. So it helped me kind of reframe like, okay, what are some of my goals? And like, mm-hmm. how can I do steps of like, okay, maybe like properties down at the end of the list, but first is this. And then I'll, I could kind of want to work towards this. And it just made me think like, let me have a framework. Um, and it also gave me resources to be like, okay, this is somebody I know I could talk to um, when I'm at the certain point on, okay, what to think about and what not to think about. Because one of the things she kept telling me was, she was like, um, every time I was like, oh, I got to get my stuff together. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. And she was like, stop, stop thinking like that. She was like, the mother people don't be using their money to do anything. Like, you know, it's all about how you can work the system and everything else. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it just kind of actually ended up giving me a little bit of hope. Whereas at first, just from comparing just off top, I was just like, dang, I, I would think that I would be nice to be doing these things that they feel so out of reach. So that got me to thinking about comparison and how we could use it to turn it into a positive motivating force instead of just staying in that space where it's like, oh, I wish I had that or dang, everybody else is doing this. But what can we do to take that to the next step? to accomplish accomplish things and to achieve things i think comparison is something that we're socialized to do like you know who's got the highest Mm -hmm. grade in the class who's the fastest who's this who's that you know all these things and so because everything is competition everything is a competition the way our society is set up yeah and so it's not unusual that we do that but i think we're made to feel bad about comparing ourselves and that's because we don't know how to use it constructively Mm -hmm. and so some of the reasons like the issues with comparison are a huge one is emotional drainage like you're in a space of lack while comparing you are like feeling less than because of what somebody else has Mm -hmm. and then not knowing like what they go through (laughs) so like you see people's wins on Instagram and yeah. LinkedIn and social media, but you really never know. Yeah. And so it's so one-sided, like these narratives that we make up yeah. in our head. Cause also um, in the same vein, right. I could be like, yeah, but also I don't have three kids or divorce or, you know what I mean? There's a whole lot of other things that with people are like, Oh man, wow, they did this. But there's also those other things and you don't know the full story. You don't necessarily shouldn't necessarily be thinking like, I want to switch with this person or mm-hmm. live their life. And then even think about yourself, like, I don't be putting up everything either. So like even what people see of me, sometimes I'm like, what are y'all talking about? But I'm like, oh, I guess I, you know, I'm gonna put That's up highlights and see. Put, yeah, yeah. put up things that are cool. And also reminding myself, like, oh yeah, these things are cool. So it's not like um you're this and they're, you know, something else or way out of this league or whatever. It's it's all kind of perspective and a lot of context that you don't know. Mm-hmm. And I think one, like hating ain't never helped anybody get better mm-hmm. at things. And then another one is it really just steals your joy and like your ability to be grateful and present with where you are and what you have. Mm-hmm. Anytime you're like too concerned with what other people got going on. Yeah. And sometimes, especially when it comes to like work things, 
sometimes it is easy to fall into that slightly like hate in space too, because you'd be like, this person's like, you know, talking at this place or a part mm-hmm. of this um, event or whatever. And it's like, mm, I, they don't even really know, you know, what, what the industry is or they don't like, you might know things and it's like, well, how are they getting to this place or that place? And you really just have to run your own race and not be worried about honestly what the next person is doing anyway. Unless it's like, oh, let me get some tips on how they're getting in these spaces because you know that you could be in them and provide value in those spaces as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, also something that can ruin your relationships. Um, If you are secretly, I'm going to say secretly, but like if you're kind of like comparing all your moves or comparing consistently like somebody who you call your friends, um, life with yours, then I promise you the energy is probably kind of negative when you're like around them. Um, or a phony, if that, um, it's just not like a loving space to be in. It's not a free feeling space. It doesn't feel good for you. They might feel kind of like eh, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one story. I, it kind of relates to this, but I remember one of my pers- friends who I would call like one of my best friends from college. I remember one time she said to me, she was like, you always get everything you want or like you always have everything. And I was like, okay. At the time I was like, okay. But now I'm like, yeah, because I, I know what I want. I, I go do the things, right? Like, while, you know, you may be cool being in, you know, this position or doing that or, mm-hmm. you know, not traveling or whatever it is, right? Like, I'm doing the things I want to do, and I'm like, and you can too. So it's kind of frustrating to talk to or, or have situations with people who are also kind of talking to you as if, like, oh, you got it on me, and it's like, okay, I guess, but you could be doing whatever you want to. So why compare when, um, and I'm always happy to like talk to people about what are you trying to do and Mm -hmm. bringing that out of them and figure it out too. Right. So let's do that instead of just comparing and then feeling some kind of way. And it's so hard to love people who do that. Like it really strains relationships. Like even if you really love a person, because I had someone like that too, it was like, oh, you, you know, you getting all these things. And it's like, bro, you don't see me working for all this stuff I'm getting. And sometimes I think they don't realize they're like, they sound like that. Like, that you also could have just been like, wow, congrats, like you're doing really well. But it's like, you getting all these awards, like, okay. okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, or like, what is, what are you trying to say? Or feeling like, why not me? Um, mm-hmm. Like making their situation you about you. Me. Yeah. Like any of those <laughs> things um, are signs. And the, and the negative side of comparison, which are all very real and a trap that a lot of us can get stuck in. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be like that. So do you have any stories or any examples where, um, Sure, you could have compared or maybe you compared, but then you reframe that to be like, hmm, actually, let me use this, what I'm seeing or what I'm thinking or what mm-hmm. you've doing, what you're doing to like help myself and, and take myself to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, The first one I thought about was one of my friends who's in film and then I'll tell my own, but only because he told me and it was so powerful at the time. He was, um, I have two mutual friends from undergrad who live in L.A. and both in entertainment and stuff. And one of them was killing it, like Mm. million dollar deals, like doing the damn thing. Right. And the other one was, but behind the scenes and he wasn't really posting and stuff. And anyways, he was just like, you know, I've always looked at him and been like, why not me? And then he changed Mm. that and was like, congratulatory, like genuine, genuinely like Mm. really happy for him. And, really, you know, sat with himself. And then that's when, like, the gateway kind of broke and all his stuff started popping. Mm. And he was like, wow, I was holding myself back, thinking, wow, why always him? Why not me? Instead of, like, why can't it be me? You know, wow, Mm. look at all the things he's doing. He's opening doors. Now I have a connect at this place that maybe I want to do something. And he was able to, like, flip his mindset. And the moment he did that, he said everything changed in his career. Did he Did he also change something action-wise that, that opened up more opportunities? Or is it just... When you think different, now you're seeing I think, the spaces to I was to about to say, forward. I think his was just mental, like mm-hmm. thinking different. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's so important. Um, one of my homegirls who lives in Dallas, she has a um, educational consulting business that does psychological safety. She's amazing. But we're very much overlapping. Like we got our yoga t- teaching certifications mm-hmm. at the same time and all these things. And what's interesting is it could be so easy for me to look at her and be like, damn, why is my business not growing? Why, not, why am I not getting these contracts? Mm-hmm. But instead, her and I always talk about ways to grow my business. Every time her and I talk, she's like, how can I help you? Here's my system for this. Here's this thing. What do you need? Mm -hmm. And, like, always feeding me work. And I'm doing the same thing with ideas and helping her grow her stuff. And it's been such a beautiful collaboration when it could have been something, you know, to make me feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are good examples because, again, it's like, why compare when we could collaborate, when I Mm -hmm. could um, choose to respect you 
um, I could choose to lift you up and I could choose to, to ask you questions. And, and like, I think that's a big thing too. I think we have so much pride now. And I think that also with social media, it's like, we all want to be experts at everything and know everything that we don't stop often enough to ask people like, Oh, how are you? How'd you get all those speaking mm-hmm. engagements? Um, who's your, who's your link for that? Cause a lot of times it will be like, Oh, this it's just somebody who, you know, or whatever. Right. Um, and so it's like, well, let's take time to actually be curious and to explore opportunities instead of just being like, dang, they get everything because you can move into that same space. Um, so when we find ourselves comparing, um, I think that we can work with that. If, if you're able to, first of all, of course, the first thing, as usual, is being able to, to notice it. And mm-hmm. um, I think I notice it when I... Oh, how would I say this? Like, if I see something and I, and I immediately kind of just feel some kind of way, I know that's not really explicative, but, um, you know, if you mm-hmm. see some of the fire off and you're like, dang, that joint, you know, it's like, you're like, dang, I ain't really dressed up today or whatever, right? You know, as soon as you kind of feel some kind of way. So I would say the first step for sure is noticing it. But when, if you can get to a point where you can notice it, I think that you can also allow comparison to be constructive. Um, so we're going to talk about how we can do that. So recognizing when you're doing it is the first step. And then also asking yourself, like, in that moment, like, how am I feeling about this? Like, kind of what's going on? So you really have to do some self-discovery, some unlearning, some unearthing, if you will, about why you are feeling a type of way. It might Mm -hmm. be because, you know, you aren't getting these opportunities, but you know you're not doing the work. Mm -hmm. And that's a real easy fix. Do the work. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't understand why you're feeling a certain way, then it'll be harder to heal and kind of use this constructively. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can do is at the point where you find yourself comparing, you can show support instead, um, very similar to Carly's example. But, for example, if you see somebody, and I do this all the time, like you compliment somebody like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, your brows look great. It could be as simple as that to nice car or um, congratulations on on uh, being at that event. Like turn it into support, into con- being congratulatory to people because you are you got to give people their shine. And it does kind of open up something. And like it, I think um, – the comparing and kind of hating, but it's like stay into yourself is kind of like a blockage. And just by like allowing some joy to flow out and, and to praise the next person, I think that that really does kind of open doors a little bit more. And you never lose anything by giving, by giving mm-hmm. people love, giving people praise. And also it, it helps people like look at you as a generous person, mm-hmm. which also opens up more doors. And and I think what you said about um, giving is important too, because it's, it's like, it's a little bit more abundant mindset because it does. Why is it something to hold back? Because um, obviously, for one, if you're comparing, obviously you like what they did or, or see something good about what they did. Right. So to see that and not acknowledge it is kind of like a lack mindset as opposed to an abundance. It's like, wow, you did that. That doesn't mean that can nobody else do it, that you can't do it or whatever. So I think it's kind of a more of an abundant mindset as well. And in that abundance, like being inspired by people doing amazing things, by changing Mm -hmm. their body, getting that job, moving to another country. Like instead of looking at it like, man, I'm lacking in these areas, using that moment to be inspired and then taking stock of your own goals and tasks. Mm -hmm. Like the things you need to do to get to where you want to be. You're like, wow. Like Lacey said, she's like, man, I never even thought about that. That is such a cool idea and opportunity for my business. Never even thought about it. Right. And so next is being curious. So to ask those questions. Oh, well, so how much did you need to save to start out with it? Oh, there's these other programs and stuff where you don't have to pay anything. Like, like you're learning in that point and getting resources. Um, and that allows you to a take the inspiration and then B start moving into figuring out what a plan could be for you or how you can also, um, make something true for yourself. Another important one is to water your own grass and invest in yourself. I think that it's harder to feel bad about yourself if you're no, if you know you're doing all the things that you want to do for you and that you need to do to fill your own cup. Mm-hmm. Like um, a lot of times us feeling bad about other people is obviously our own projection of lack within ourselves. And so, you know, by starting and filling up yourself and working on your stuff, it's a lot harder to feel that lack. Yeah. And an example there that's pretty low hanging is like you could scroll social media and see all these fit bodies and Half of it is face tuned and mm. all kind of stuff. And that's not even a hate on that, but it it really is. And it's so funny when I talk to a friend of mine who's like an esthetician or whatever, it's like literally n- nobody's pictures are straight up them. 
Um, but outside of that, it's like, okay, scrolling through that and looking bad or, you know, okay, you go to the gym or you, this week you meal plan in or whatever. Right. So it's like, what are you going to do for yourself? If your goal is, I feel, I want to feel better about my body, then we need to actually have something that we're doing uh, towards that. And then I, I kind of feel better, right? Like it, mm-hmm. I enjoy better. Like the last couple of weeks I've been actually cooking at home, making more salads and just having like at least an intentional meal every day. It's like, I don't feel any kind of way seeing what other people are looking like and what they're doing. Cause I know I'm taking care of myself and stop using the word should, mm-hmm. um, catch yourself and making sure that it's like, I want to do this. I get to do this. Like I get to work out and take care of my body instead of man, I should do this and should do this. Cause I feel like that really like puts you against it and it be- mm-hmm. starts to build up and then you feel a lot of pressure. Um, so instead using like want to get to using grateful, abundant statements about things in your life, I get to work out. Wow. Yeah. You know, it might not be the job you have right now, but man, I'm so glad I get to go to work to pay for it you know, other things so I can then study and become what I really want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always a way to reframe your perspective. Also, just give social media a break if you need to. That's the easiest way to fall into a comparison trap, just mm-hmm. from scrolling and seeing what people are saying, seeing what people are showing, what they're doing. Um, and sometimes you just need to get a break from even all that noise of other people so you can kind of just figure out, like, what you want to be doing for yourself and what your own goals are. And then – Comparing yourself to you. So thinking about your idealized self, what you want your body to be, how you want to feel. We did the life manifesto, like all of these things. And then taking stock. Am I doing these things? Comparing yourself to you because that's your real true goal and vision. So use yourself as a mile marker instead of somebody else. And I feel like that would be more inspirational as opposed to making you feel less than. Yes. And celebrate yourself and your accomplishments, big and small. Um, Look at the evidence that, that you are doing what you need to be doing and that you are making progress towards the things you want to be doing. Um, All of these are really, really good ways to just reframe even perspective and just reframing your perspective. When you find yourself kind of feeling blah or Mm -hmm. comparing will at least make you feel better in that moment. Right. And life is about feeling better, feeling good. If I feel good, then cool. Whatever else is going on and the troubles is whatever. Um, I don't have to feel bad because it looks like somebody has more than, than me because in this moment, like I am taken care of and I have a plan and I'm doing the work and blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, I feel good. Um, So look at all of these things and and be able to catch yourself when you are comparing and think about what you can do to invest in yourself so it doesn't feel like everybody else is doing something and you're not doing anything because there's plenty that we can be doing and probably plenty that we are doing that we haven't acknowledged for ourselves. And as you raise your vibration and are more abundant and more generous, it's like all your goals and dreams and all the things you want can actually meet you because you're not coming at it from a different energy. So... Hit us this week at Carly's Couch. Let us know, you know, how comparison looks in your life. If you have any other tips or if any of these stood out to you, we'd love to hear from you. Adios. Adios.